Moin, willkommen zurück bei Everlasting Summer. Nachdem wir beim letzten Mal erfolgreich Krankenschwester gespielt haben, haben wir mal wieder was gegessen. Irgendwie findet sehr viel von diesem Spiel in der Kantine statt, wo dann meistens nichts Interessantes passiert. Naja. Und schauen jetzt mal, was der Tag weiterbringt. Wir suchen ja auch immer nach einer Schuhrig. Also wir suchen sehr äh, effektiv und so. The sun was setting. I decided to take a walk. It's highly unlikely that I would find anything more exciting to do for the rest of the evening. That way something interesting could arise quite unexpectedly. I was approaching the square when I heard a loud bang. It seemed like something had exploded. I was paralyzed. Gucken wir mal kurz auf die Sound Settings. Nicht, dass ich euch eh gerade voll die Musik... Ah ja, das ist ganz unten. Ja, okay. I am in a hostile environment, not knowing the rules and laws of this place. It would be better for me to run, but at the same time I was curious. Probably I would have just kept standing there, but somebody grabbed my hand. It was Olga Dimitrov now. Why are you standing here? Let's go and see what happened. Und du musst natürlich mitkommen, weil ich dich überall ohne Grund mit hinschleppe. Can't you ever manage without me? I begged her pitifully. It shouldn't be anything serious. I hope. <clears throat> When we came to the square, there was already a crowd of pioneers. Olga Dimitrovna vigorously pushed through the crowd and approached the crime scene. Obviously someone had tried to blow up gender. But the attackers failed. The monument was still standing upright. There were only dim ash traces on the pedestal. Well, who did this? She looked over the crowd of pioneers. Surely it wasn't done by an organized terrorist organization. These guys all came here just to look at what happened. I noticed Oliana and Alyssa in the crowd. And it looks like our camp leader noticed them too. You two, come here! They approached reluctantly. Why are you just me? If you think so. Show me your hands! Frau mit unersprechlichem Nachnamen. What's wrong with them? I looked closer and saw that they were smeared with black. Wir erinnern uns an die Aktivkohle. Now it's clear. What did you make a bump with? The junior terrorist seemed to hesitate over whether or not to confess, but then blurted up proudly. Activated carbon, salpeter and sulfur. Wait a minute. Carbon! Carbon that she stole from the first aid kit. Why exactly the monument? What did this honored man ever do to you? The fighter for the rights of... Ah, das hätte ich jetzt gern gewusst. I could hardly imagine how long she would have kept on scolding Elisif. Electronic tent pot out at that very moment, shouting... I found it! I found it! Everyone turned towards him. He held a boot in his hand. Here... Electronic boastfully shook it over his head. It's Shurik's boot. Yay, Shurik's boot. Wow. Okay, calm down. Tell us in detail where you found it. In the forest. Wie detailliert. Ah, okay. On the way to the old camp. Whispers rang among the pioneers. Sh -sh the shadow, the shadow, the shadow. Old camp, the old camp. Ooh. Are you sure? Absolutely. What's so special about this old camp? I joined in the conversation. It's nothing special, really. She stammered. One of the Sovyanox legends tells the story of a young camp leader's ghost living there. She fell in love with a pioneer, but he rejected her and so she killed herself. I knew it. She committed Harakiri with a kitchen knife! Next day that boy was hit by a bus. Bam. 
Das ist schon ziemlich ab Pech, wenn hier so selten ein Bus vorbeikommt, ne? Oh ja, ran out of the crowd. Mann, ich hoffe, die Musik ist bei euch jetzt nicht so laut drauf. Ich kann die nicht mehr leiser drehen. Das ist ja echt... Warum überhaupt so übertrieben dann? Was? I refrain from asking about the root number. But science doesn't acknowledge the existence of ghosts, so we have nothing to be afraid of. Genau. Anyway, somebody should go there. Suddenly the crowd starts to thin out. Oh god, I'm a traveler. It's almost night. Maybe tomorrow? I turned around and saw Slavia and Lena. What if at night... What if at night something happens to him? No, today, right now. Right here, right now. By the way, where is this place? Electronic roughly described to me the direction and told me the story of the old camp. The camp leader looked at me attentively. If you think that I... You're the only man here. Was? So what the fuck? Man? Wir sind 17, Mann! Du bist der Camp Leader und du schickst uns im Dunkeln raus. I looked around the area. Of course. Electronic was quick to flee. I still didn't want to walk in the woods alone. Mal abgesehen davon, ja natürlich braucht man einen Mann dafür. Oh Gott, die armen hilflosen Frauen. If you ask me, I would... Letztes Mal bin ich tatsächlich mit Elissa gegangen, aber wir wollen ja Lena. I won't have to go there alone, will I? Okay, the Traveler thought for a moment. You may be right. We go together tomorrow. For the last few minutes, I'd noticed that Lena had a strange look on her face. As if she wanted to say something, but didn't dare to. Oh, das letzte Mal musste ich echt mit Elissa losgehen und sie hat sich dann sehr untypisch und ängstlich und so fallen auf einmal. Hm. Okay. The pioneers started to disperse, as they had forgotten about Elissa and the explosion. Even our leader seemed to calm down and didn't react when the wannabe terrorist left the square, hiding behind Uliana. We should go... Uh, we should go too. Yes. Hm, vielleicht habe ich nicht genug Punkte bei Lena und deswegen kann ich hier mit ihr gehen. Night quickly fell on the camp. There's only a brief moment between the first rays of the setting sun till complete darkness here in the south. Or maybe in this world. You don't have enough time to enjoy the variety of the sunset colors. It was too early to go to bed, but the leader confidently walked to her cabin, as if mentally dragging, dragging me with her. Oh, good Dimitrevna, I'll take a little walk. Okay. She looked at me intently, but didn't find any reason to object, shrugged her shoulders and keep walking. I went back to the square. I didn't really want to look closely at the trivia damage done to the gender statue. It was at the exact center of the camp. If you don't know where to go, you should start from there. I sat on the bench and looked to the west. I wondered if the earth here revolves on its axis as it should. Or whether there was an actual north or south. It's hard to say. At this time, I didn't have an, any ideas on how to check the fundamental laws of nature. Hi. Lena appeared next to me as if from nowhere. Aufgeploppt. Uh, hi, can't sleep? She looked at me in surprise. Oh, well, yes, it's still early. May I sit? Ah, oh, Jason can we reden. Uh, yeah, of course, sit down. I moved over a little. Saying a little was in fact an understatement. I actually shifted myself to the end of the bench. Thanks. Lena sat and looked at, if this, at the sky as if she'd forgotten about me. It's sad. What is sad? That Shurik disappeared. Oh, yes, things aren't too good. She was, was as calm as usual. Keeping silent most of the time. She blushed and felt embarrassed only when she had to speak or do something. The same silence which could be seen as 
awkwardly awkward by many people, including myself, was quite natural for her. I could hardly imagine Lena making an effort to carefully choose the right words to start a conversation or make a good remark, trying not to look stupid or alternatively running trying not to look as rude as Elisa. I just wasn't able to compare her to anyone. She was just content with being herself. Doesn't mean that my attempts to start a conversation with her could be seen as rude? That the expression become friends could be interpreted as an intrusion into her private life? But something in this girl attracted me. Maybe it was her mysteriousness, and she certainly wasn't lacking in appearance or feminine charms. I didn't have an answer for that. That's why I still hadn't openly accused of, hadn't been openly accused of being annoying. I'm sure he'll be found. How can you escape from a submarine? <laughs> Lena didn't seem to appreciate the joke. This camp must seem like a large submarine to me only. I hope so. Tomorrow, to, tomorrow, mm -hmm. tomorrow, Olga Dimitrievna will call the police. I found him for sure. And what if during the night? Her expression grew sad. What if something happens to him? Alone at night in the forest, anything could happen. He must be lonely. No one forced him to go there. What if he just got lost? And let us zoom in. He shouldn't go walking in the forest alone. You don't have any pity for him at all. Shurik may be sitting there all alone. <laughs> of course I pity him. I felt ashamed. In any case, Lina was right. A person was missing. Anything could happen during the night. We aren't seriously going to search for him now, are we? She didn't reply, still looking somewhere far away, where the last rays of the sun shined over the tops of the old trees, as if trying to leave a bit of its warmth with the people. Do you really think that roaming around the forest in the dark is a good idea? Probably not. For some reason, I was sure that was exactly what she thought. Recently, I seem to be starting to understand Lina even without words more often. And she seemed to be influencing me psychologically, making me agree with her. Lina's silence was more informative than any chat or attempts at persuasion. They looked for him during the day already. Everywhere? She stopped watching the sunset and looked at me. I don't know, I think everywhere. Naja, wenn's überall wäre, hätten sie ihn gefunden, ne? What about the old camp? For the first time, her words sounded self-assured and not vague or indifferent. Where is it? I have no idea. Electronic told us. Well, if you trust them. I went stupidly, but Lena kept looking at me seriously. Sure, if it's not too far. So you want to go? Of course I don't. We can, if it's just there and back, quickly. Okay. Lina smiled and gave me a flashlight, which appeared from nowhere. Yes, that'll be useful. Does this mean she's prepared beforehand? And nothing was up to me? I sighed as if doomed and headed to the forest with her. Also doch. Night fell on the camp. We walked slowly. Lena was next to me, near but not too close. It was strange, but it looked like she wasn't afraid of anything. Moreover, she didn't seem to be bothered much about what we were doing, as if we weren't walking in the forest at night but just watching a movie with other people playing leading roles. Actually, Electronic said that the old camp was not too far and if we walked straight to it then it would be hard to get lost. After a few minutes I was completely unsure that we were walking straight and after a few more I started, it started to seem that it would be a miracle for us even to get out of here. But I didn't want to lose face before Lina so I tried to walk cheerfully. 
The forest was full of silent, flickering shadows and gleaming moonbeams. The grass quietly rushed under our, rustled under our feet and the branches rustled over our heads. Old oak stood next to young birches. Large mushrooms emerged from under the latter, as if taking off their large heads and salute. On any other day, or rather at any other time of the day, it would have looked beautiful. It may be safe at night too, but nevertheless I shuddered at each gust of wind. Look! Lena pointed forward. I rubbed my eyes and saw a gap between the trees. In a minute we were in a rather large clearing. In the middle of it stood a building, which looked like a village school or a kindergarten. The paint was falling off the walls. There were several holes in the roof, like the aftermath of a bombing, and the glassless windows looked at us sadly and a little threateningly. It was not a very pleasant sight. I couldn't remember how I'd imagined this place a moment ago. It was like all the images had been erased from my memory, replaced by this depressing graveyard view. Well, it's creepy. Lena was still standing silently, but a natural expression of fright appeared on her face. Was fright? Irgendwie sieht sie ähm, freudig überrascht aus. Do you think he is in there? I have no idea. If I was sure, then a haunted house would be the last plane I'd hide in. Shall we go? Uh -huh. I didn't manage to answer. The moon appeared from behind the clouds and illuminated the clearing with new colors. Actually, in one color, the white of the grave. I could see more clearly the distant trees, the mist shrouding them. It felt like the temperature dropped several degrees, making me shiver. Are you afraid? Lena asked calmly. Honestly? She smiled almost impossibly and took my hand. It would have caused a storm of emotions in any other situation, but at that time it felt like a basic necessity. We slowly walked to the building. Huh. Ooh. Walking through the playground, I pushed a merry-go-round, causing it to creak nastily as it made a half a turn. Lena shivered and grasped my hand tighter. Uh, sorry, I probably just remembered my childhood. Did you like merry-go-rounds? Uh, yeah, actually, I don't know, I don't remember. Probably all children like them. I didn't like them. Why? I got dizzy when I wrote them. No wonder if you spin too fast. I like swings more. Well, you can't get dizzy on a swing as well. But why would you? I don't know. That conversation had distracted me a little and I stopped worrying myself about everything. About Shurik, about our night trip, about Lena. After all, this world is not so alien. Finally, we reached the doors. Das ist jetzt alles neu. Mit Elisa war ich ganz anders. Das ist sehr cool. The inside of the old camp building reminded me of a kindergarten. Um, the one I attended in my childhood. At first glance, even the room arrangement was the same. Shurik! Shurik! Grave-like silence replied to us. Even the wind outside had coughed down. Looks like nobody's here. We should check anyway. Lena's courage still didn't cease to surprise me. Or should I say, her lack of normal self-preservation instincts didn't. I don't know if this behavior is strange for this girl or not. Okay, let's do it. Let's fall in love. We thoroughly examined all the rooms of the old camp. I even expected the attic. There were signs that people had visited this place everywhere. Newspapers, empty bottles and other garbage. But there was no sign of Shurik. We returned to the hall where we had started our search. What should we do next? I have no idea. Lena sat on the steps and started at her feet. 
I think we should go back. I began carefully. It's late and can just the two of us really search the entire forest for him? You may be right. She looked sad and her expression let me know that the search was not over yet. Well, I am. I waved my hands in resignation and sat next to her. We should think about the worst outcome. Are you saying... <laughs> no, but are there white animals around? I doubt it. Lena calmed down at once. He may be sleeping somewhere. He'll wake up in the morning and return to the camp. Yes, of course. I jumped to my feet and started to walk in circles around the hall. I really wanted to leave this place, to get out from the forest, but it, it was as if Lena's behavior was keeping me here. I wanted to go on trying to pursue it here, but then I noticed something on the floor. It was a trapdoor. There were little heaps of garbage and dust around it. It must have been opened recently. Look! Do you think Shurik is there? Lena squatted and carefully pulled on the hatch handle. It may not be Shurik, but somebody surely used it recently. I had already regretted finding the damn gate to hell. Let's check it out. The trapdoor wasn't very heavy, so you could open it without much effort. I directed the flashlight into it and saw a ladder going down a couple of meters. Looks like a cellar. Let's go down. I looked at Lena for a moment, trying to understand what was on her mind. Did she have a craving for adventure like Oriana? So where's her useful spirit then? Or maybe she just went a bit nuts. Lena doesn't seem like a crazy person. But anyway, who even said that she really is a human and you can evaluate her with human behavior behavioral logic? That thought should have scared me, but somehow I didn't pay it any attention among the millions of other thoughts. Some of them were more important. For example, what could be down there? Huh. Ah, yeah. It's quite bekannt. I clamped down and looked around. Everything is okay. After I made sure that there was nothing to be afraid of, I called Lena. We stood in the long corridor, which certainly wasn't a cellar. Its architecture more resembled KGB dungeons or a subway maintenance tunnel. I don't know which would be better. There were countless wires among the walls fastened by metal hooks every half a meter. There were lamps under the ceiling, covered by rusted shades. Crumbled concrete crunched under our feet unpleasantly. Shall we go? Lena said Lena without saying emo without any emotion. Where to? There? Well, yes. What if Shirik is there? What would he be doing there? In any case, I wasn't really able to refuse her today, so we forgot about our fear and headed into the darkness. Und was wir weiter in diesen geheimnisvollen Tunnel finden, sehen wir beim nächsten Mal. Das war's für heute von eurem Nötenmädchen.